Okay, so welcome to Turkey. I'm from Doğan Kitap team. We asked our social media uh, followers uh, the questions that they would like to ask you. So uh, there were many, many questions when we selected some of them, so uh, we're, we're going to ask them to you. Actually, four of our uh, followers asked the same questions. They, they said, how did you start writing? And uh, what do you advise to young authors? Like, uh, what, what should they do to write better? I started out writing because I was reading. I think, like, making music is a reaction to listening to, to music. I, I just started writing really at a young age, uh, not with any plans to get published, just for the sheer enjoyment of, uh, of, of writing and telling stories. I, I come from a very storytelling family, so I guess that uh, it was just natural for, uh, for me. And then, just later on, uh, when I was in my 30s, and I had been writing lyrics for my own band and for my friends' bands for many years, uh, a girl I knew at the publishing house, uh, she approached me and asked me if I could write something for them, uh, maybe about my band. Uh, but I said that, you know, no, I, I won't write about the band, but maybe something else. And so I wrote my first crime novel. So that's what, uh, that was how that started. Um, advice to, to, to young writers. I, I would think I would have to give the same advice I was given when I was going to start writing a novel. It was write something every day and, and, and don't postpone it. I mean, it's not like, if you want to write a novel, and you haven't written, even had to go at writing a novel, start today, start tonight, you know. Go, if you have two hours before you go to bed, start writing your first novel. It's, it's, it's not like you need to prepare or wait for inspiration. It's, um, it's you and the, um, and the piece of paper or probably your laptop, you know. It's, uh, uh, there's nothing to it. It's, it's start. You're probably gonna have to need to write some bad stuff first. Uh, you have to write the bad stuff before you can get to the good stuff. So uh, go home tonight and start writing the bad stuff, uh, so you can get it over with. Yeah, it, you know, when you say that, I, it just, I just had the feeling that I should start writing something tonight, right before going to bed. So that's impre inspiring. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have another um, reader who said, how do you create your characters? Uh, do you research and, you know, like, uh, do you... Yeah, well, I, I have often uh, quite spe specific ideas for my uh, characters. Um, that is partly based on what I need them to do uh, in, the, in the plot, uh, but also characters that I find interesting, that I find often characters that have certain contradictions, like most of us as human beings, um, I find that interesting. Um, but no matter how detailed I plan my characters, something happens when they start talking. They will take on a life of their own. There will be sort of an inner logic uh, to the character that I can't that I can't 100% control. Um, it's not like it's not like I'm not the boss of my characters. I, I, mean, I mean, I am. I am the creator. But it's sort of a um, something happens when they open their mouths. Um, and so now, when I'm planning my characters, I make sure to write a little dialogue so I get a feeling of how they talk. What are their you know sense of humor? What are their you know uh, basic values, st stuff like that. How do they talk? That's, that's important to me. Okay. How does he create serial killers? What inspires them? Um, serial killers are often not really characters. They are often, in my stories, they represent the monster. They may represent a certain bit of... Uh, of, of your and, and, and my character. Uh, uh, but there are, I mean, there are so few serial killers around, hopefully. Um, so it's not like they, 
they are like this white whale so it uh, wouldn't feel right to to have them as real life characters because they they don't really exist in that uh, in that way in the in the, in the world of fiction uh, it's it's something that is hard to relate to but if you take a certain you know your inner psychopath that little bit we all have of an inner psychopath and you blow that up and make that into a personality kind of a Frankenstein's monster then you have a character character that is not a character but that but, but it's a mirror it's a mirror for the other characters courage weaknesses intelligence shortcomings uh, you know it's something you have to fight um, so I when I create a serial killer I don't start with a serial killer I start with the characters fighting the serial killer or hunting down the serial killer um, those are the characters I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, telling about uh, he's writing all the time. How does he manage not to repeat himself? Uh, is it challenging for him? I'm sure I'm repeating myself. Uh, uh, there are certain themes that I can that I can see that is uh, uh, recurring themes, uh, like father-son relationship, um, like um, uh, uh, the the cutting off of limbs. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't, don't know if a psychiatrist would probably say there's a uh, castration fear in there somewhere. <laughs> and uh, uh, that I'm not really conscious about. That I, I just, in hindsight, I say, that, oh, wow, wow. Um, but, um, and, and, and it's also, I'm, I'm not afraid of repeating myself. I mean, if you, if you look at great artists, they do repeat themselves. I mean, it's, it's like they are, if you look at Quentin Tarantino, you, you could say that many of his first movies, they were the same movie being made over and over again, just trying to get it right. Uh, and I think that's, that's a good way to work as an artist because we don't need, the world doesn't need like uh, 10 separate books from an, uh, from an artist, they need one masterpiece. And if it, if it makes, it's a better chance of making it a masterpiece if you, if you try over and over again just to get it right what you're trying to, to say, then I think that's uh, okay. So um, uh, I will, in that respect, I, I don't mind repeating myself. Someone said, actually three people uh, ask the same questions, similar questions. Someone said, everybody is crazy about Joe Nesbo here, but who does he read? Uh, in Scandinavian crime fiction, uh, who are your favorite authors and your favorite books? I don't know uh, if I have to... if I restrict myself to Scandinavia. It, I don't know, it probably wouldn't be crime writers. I, I quite like... Um, this new guy now is not new in Norway, but uh, Matthias Falbakken who uh, is writing *The Hills*, which is not a crime story. It's, it's more like a uh, um, small town novel meets uh, a domestic thriller meets Mary Shelley's *Frankenstein*. Uh, but it's uh, but it's a terrific novel. You know, it's a shockingly good result. Uh, uh, a, a piece of truly original writing. So uh, um, right now, that's my um, that's my favorite. In your books, uh, which character resembles you most? How much of Harry Hall is Joe Nesbo? Well, I'd say seventy-three percent. How many? Seventy-three percent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's. Uh, I mean, it's, I didn't set out. It's not my alter ego, uh, and I certainly didn't set out to. Uh, to sort of write myself into my main character, but it's um, it, it's like it can't be avoided, especially if you write about your main character um, year after year. Um, you know, you you end up using yourself in that character. So it's it's more like in hindsight I see that okay, there's more. I've used more of myself in the, in my main character than I planned to. Um. 
Will Harry ever come to Turkey in one of your books? Will Harry catch a killer in Turkey? <laughs> um, would you want him to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, then. Yeah. <laughs> with Harry's father and son relationship with Oleg, uh, will Oleg's biological father be, be involved uh, in this? How will Harry cope with it? Uh, <laughs> it's, um, I will, uh, I don't have any immediate plans for, uh, for, uh, uh Oleg's, uh, biologic father. It's, um, uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Is it possible that, uh, Nesbo has had enough of, uh, Harry Hall? I have... Every book I write about Harry, I've had enough of Harry uh, for a while. He's a, he's a very intense guy. Uh, he's like that friend of yours that after having spent a week in, with him, you don't call him back on, on Monday. Uh, so, uh, but, but maybe uh, by the end of the week, you're, you are ready for some more. Yeah. Um, will the Harry Hall series continue? Uh, the thing is that um, the genre of the crime fiction of the Who's Done It is, of course, the campaign is spoilers, and it's sort of also the rule of the of the series that it's uh, part of the um, suspense is whether does the story end here? Will there be another story? So uh, uh, I know, but I can't tell you. Okay. Um, and you can't answer this question. Uh, when will Harry die? What will happen after Harry dies? Of course, then in that case, you're not going to be able to tell. <laughs> okay. Again, when will you end Harry whole series? Will there be a happy ending for Harry? Again. Um, well, it's it's hard to imagine, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, it depends on what you mean by a happy ending. Um, um, ending, uh, if, if you have an ending, it's per definition. Not a happy ending. Is uh, I, I I mean it's it's hard to imagine Harry dying from old age, of course. But uh, then again, why not? Um, does it make you sad to know that one day you'll say goodbye to your best friend Harry Hall? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's like I mean I will not keeping keeping him on as a character of fiction. Um, just because I need him around, uh, you know, it's, uh, I have, I, I respect the story, the storyline of Harry, the logic of the, of the character and the story, that there will be an end. And uh, after the, the end, there will not be any resurrection of Harry, then the story is over. So the story does have an end and uh, it's, uh, I will not tell you when that is going to be, but of course the end is, is, is getting closer. Is he planning to a new series with different characters? Um, partly. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a series yet, but I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I have some other projects that I'm uh, working on, so uh, we'll see. Uh, at least it'll be a, a standalone, but I don't know if it's going to be a series yet. Okay. Will Oleg be the new Harry? Will there be a new series with Oleg following the footsteps of Harry? I don't think so. Um, how did you come up with writing a book that's inspired by Shakespeare's Macbeth? Um, I was invited by, um, uh, by the, the publishing house. Um, they had a series of um, uh, Shakespeare plays uh, that they wanted made into novels, so they invited a series of international writers, or mostly American and English writers, um, and uh, me and I think Gillian Flynn were, I believe, the only crime writers that were invited. Um, so when I was asked, I said that, okay, if you can give me Macbeth, which is the one Shakespeare play that I have a close relationship to, I will do it. Um, and it's because, you know, it, it, it's such a strong story. And in, in, in many ways, Harry was, was inspired by, by Macbeth, the idea of of establishing a protagonist that you then will 
move towards the dark side and becoming this tragic antagonist in many ways and, and, and see if the reader are still with you on the, on the right, if they are still rooting for this character. Um, that's interesting and it's an interesting challenge as a, as a writer. Uh, when is the new book coming? Many, many people have asked that. Uh, is it possible to see uh, Harry Hall's adventures as TV series? Yeah, uh, I don't know and I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. One of your very, very big fans, he has said, uh, Nesbo has raised the bar for crime fiction such that we compare every book we read to uh, his books. Uh, Harry is not an ordinary fiction character for us. It's a universal character and uh, an anarchist protagonist. We also love the way he writes. He, he writes like magic. He's a musician, athlete, author of children's books. Uh, my question is there, is anything Joe Nesbo cannot do? Yeah, there's a lot of things I can't do. I'm a, uh, I'm a uh, uh, overrated soccer player, by the way. It's uh, people in my hometown seem to remember me as a better and better football player <laughs> for each year that passed. <laughs> so I guess they just like this myth of me being the, 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 the sort of this great talent that uh, never had the chance to flourish be, uh, because of injury. Well, the, the, the truth is, I'll, uh, I would probably end up like most soccer players do, that they peak at the age of 20. Uh, and then it's all downhill from there. Um, so I, I, I never had a chance to, <laughs> to be on that uh, downhill ride. Also, I can't cook and I'm a terrible driver. Uh, I, I, I heard that if you ask men how they, what they think about their driving abilities, 90% of men think that they are above average as drivers. Well, I'm, I'm among those 10% that think I'm below average as a driver. Okay. Um, uh, a booktuber said, how about dinner? Well, um, <laughs> okay. And the last question connected to it, someone else said, will you marry me? Well, <laughs> uh, well I have to... 